Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Catherine Rockies podcast. We are so glad you are here today. We pray that the Lord meets you at the very point of your need. God, we commit this podcast into your hands. Lord, have your way. Holy Spirit, take control in the name of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to be talking about the story of uh, King Solomon. This can be found in 2 Chronicles 1, starting from verse 1. Uh, and also, it can be found in 1 Kings 3, 4 to 28. So first of all, we're going to start with 2 Chronicles. So 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 1, it says, And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him, and magnified him greatly so solomon was the son of david and he took over from david when he passed on so i want us to uh, look at go to second king and establish a very key point uh, to this story and that can be found in first king three and three the first part of three it says and solomon loved the lord walking in the status of his father david so i wanted to establish the kind of heart that uh, solomon had before we continue with the story so solomon the bible tells us that solomon loved the lord so let's go back to uh second chronicles um one so we're gonna go down to and we're gonna go down to verse We're going to go down to 6. Second Chronicles 1 and 6. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings unto a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. So, um, Solomon, first of all, we see that Solomon was strengthened um, in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly. And we see that um, Solomon loved the Lord. So the love he had for God, I believe that is what triggered the offering that he offered unto God. He offered a thousand sacrifices unto God. And I believe that God saw his heart and that he saw that he loved him and saw that his heart towards him. And he appeared to Solomon um, in the night and said, ask me whatever you want me to do for you. What do you want me to give you? Ask what I shall give thee. And um, let us continue um, from verse 8. That's Second Chronicles 1 and 8. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and had made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my, my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude give me now wisdom and knowledge that i may go out and come in before these people for who can judge this thy people that is so great and god said to solomon because this was in thy heart and thou had not asked riches wealth or honor nor the life of thy enemies. Neither yet had thou asked for long life, but had asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou might judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have, None of the kings have had that had been before thee, 
neither shall there any after thee have the like. Then Solomon came from his journey to the high place and what that was at Gideon to Jerusalem from, be, from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. So what is happening here? Um, Solomon offered a thousand sacrifices unto God. Um, and God appeared to him in the night and said, ask me whatever um, you want me to give to you. He said, ask what, what shall I give thee? So God was pleased um, with his sacrifice and God was pleased with the kind of heart he had towards him. Because we see that uh, the Bible said, and Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the status of his father David. And what did Solomon ask for? Solomon asked for wisdom. He asked for wisdom to rule the people of God. And this really pleased God. He said, wow, you, you didn't ask me for riches. You didn't ask me for um, honor. You didn't ask me for wealth. You didn't even ask me for the life of your enemies. You asked me to give you wisdom. Well, God was pleased with him and he said, I'm, I'm not only going, I'm going to give you wisdom, but that's not the only thing I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you wisdom. I will also give you the riches, the wealth, the honor, everything you didn't ask for. I'm going to add it unto you. So uh, we learn from the Bible that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. And this is an example of it because uh, what God um, Solomon asked God, pleased him. He gave him even more than he asked for. So um, let us uh, look at an example of uh, Solomon's wisdom. This can be found in this can be found in First Kings three, verse. When we go down to verse sixteen, this is just an example of uh, Solomon's. Uh, wisdom the kind of wisdom that uh, Solomon uh, received from God so we're starting to read from verse 16 and now two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him and one woman said oh my lord this woman and I dwell in the same house and I gave back while she was in the house then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth. And we were together. No one was with us in the house, except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she rose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maid servant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. And when I examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the old other woman said, No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, No, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. So uh, what is going on um, here? Um, two women came... Um, to King Solomon to settle a matter for them. Apparently, uh, the two of them gave birth um, w within the space of three days and they were living in the same house. Uh, one of them laid on their child, laid down on their child and their child um, died and they exchanged their child with the other woman's uh, living uh, baby. So um, now uh, uh, they brought the matter to King Solomon because uh, each of them is claiming that the living child is, is theirs. And so how does the king determine who actually has um, the living child? So let's continue reading from uh, verse 23. And the king said, the one says, this is my son who lives and your son is the dead one. And the other says, no. But your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the child, the living child, in two, and give one and give half to one and half to the other. 
Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son, and she said, Oh my Lord, give her the living child, and by no means kill him. But the other woman said, Let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is her mother. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer to administer justice. So these uh, two women, they are fighting over this living child, and the and King Solomon, um, in his wisdom, said, okay, why don't you all bring, bring a knife, divide the child into two, give one part to the to the one woman and give the other part to the other woman so the woman that had the child whose son um who had the living child was moved with compassion said oh oh no don't kill the child it's better to give the child to the other woman and he's alive than to kill him and the woman that the child was already there was like yeah divide him divide him so that um i will not have him you will not have him so that was how um he determined who the actual uh, mother of the child was i mean what an amazing amazing wisdom this kind of wisdom can only uh come from god so um so that's that's an a, example of um uh solomon's uh wisdom the kind of wisdom that god gave to solomon so let's continue uh with this uh, story of solomon we'll continue uh in first kings 4 we're gonna um start from verse 29 and God gave Solomon wisdom and exceeding great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand of the seashore. Wow. So Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men than Eden, the Eshites, and Haman. So we we uh, look at chapter four, and it's still talking about um, uh, Solomon's wisdom. He was wiser than all the men in the in the east, and all the wisdom of Egypt. If we go down to thirty four, and men of all nations, from all the king, from all the kings of the earth, who had heard of his wisdom, came to hear. The wisdom of Solomon. So everybody from everywhere, from all the nation, all around the world, they they came to 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 listen to to Solomon because of the wisdom that that God uh, gave him. So there, yeah, we're gonna continue uh, the story. So going further in um, First King five uh, five four and uh, and five, and now the Lord my God. That Solomon speaking, he said, And now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side. There is neither adversary nor evil occurrences. And behold, I propose to build a house for the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spoke to my father David, saying, Your son, whom I will set on your throne in your place, he shall build the house for my name. So he he proposing the, his heart to to build a house for the Lord, uh, as um, the Lord um, told uh, David that he's not going to build the house, that David is not going to build the house, but that his son that will take over the throne on his in his place is going to build the house. So when we, we go down to 1 Kings 6, moving on with the story, we see that um, from 9, um, so uh, Solomon, we are talking. He said, "So he that means we are talking about Solomon now." So he built the temple and finished it, and he paneled the temple with beams and borders of cedar, and he built side chambers against the entire temple, each five cubic high. They were attached to the temple with cedar beams, and um, Solomon builds, I, I, mean, I encourage you, I encourage you to read um, the whole um, 
verse about the temple it was just an amazing project it was a beautiful project um it, the temple was mag magnific magnificent and um solomon was able to build the, a beautiful temple for the lord and and he finished it and he and he finished it so after he finished um uh, the temple and what well, we see in 11 um, 6 11 then the word of the lord came to solomon saying concerning this temple which you have building you are building if you walk in my status execute my judgment keep all my commandments and walk in them then i will perform my word with you which i spoke to your father david and i will dwell among the children of israel and will not forsake my people israel so solomon built the temple and finished it so I, I, solomon was able to Remember when we started the story, we know that he loved the Lord. He loved the Lord and he wanted to please the Lord. He wanted to do whatever the Lord tells him to do. So he uh, finished the temple. He dedicated the temple unto the Lord. He prayed at the temple. He built God's resting place. Um, let's pick pick it up from, let's pick up the story from Second Chronicles 7 from 1 to 3. And... Um, so Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. He prospered his, he prosperously effected and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. This is after he, after Solomon had um, finished building the temple the temple of the lord the lord appeared unto solomon a second night a second time and said unto him i have had thy prayer and have chosen this place uh, to myself for an house of sacrifice if i shut up heaven and there be no rain or if i command the locusts to devour the land or if i send pestilence amongst my people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins and will heal their land now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place for now have i chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be perpetually there and as for thee if thou would walk before me as david thy father walked and do according to all that i have commanded thee and shall, not, and shall observe my status and my judgment then will i establish the throne of thy kingdom according as i have converted Convenanted with David thy, thy father, saying, There shall not fail there a man to be ruler in Israel. So, what is going on here? So, we see that uh, Solomon uh, finished uh, building the temple, the temple was dedicated, and, and the Lord appeared unto. Uh, Solomon the second time and and said yeah that yes I've heard your prayer I've heard your prayer I've heard your prayer if the, my people that are called by my name they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins I will heal their life I believe this, this God is also talking to us today if if we call upon the name of the Lord, we pray, we seek his face. He hears us from heaven and he is saying that he will forgive us our sins and he will heal our land. But after he, after he said that, but he said he also gave uh, Solomon a warning. And God said, if ye turn away and forsake my status and my commandments, which I have said before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my land which i have given thee and this house which i have sanctified for my name will i cast out of my sight i will not i will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations and this house this is which is high shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it so they shall say 
Why had the Lord done thus unto this land and unto the house? And it shall be answered, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold of other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore had he brought all this evil upon them. So the Lord is telling um, uh, David, um, telling Solomon that as long as you seek my way, as long as you're on the right path, as long as um, you do not turn away uh, from my commandments and um, do what I, um, my commandments, as long as you're on the right path, the, the, um, the, his blessings is going to be uh, continually upon the house he peels and upon him he said if my people which are called by my name if you humble yourself and pray and seek my face i will hear from heaven i will forgive your sins i will heal your land so if he says and he said um if you forsake me then i will forsake you So that's what um, the verse is uh, basically saying. So uh, let's let's go down to Second uh, Chronicles. Let's go down to nine twenty. So and the, and let's uh, look uh, more about um, look more into uh, King Solomon's uh, wealth and all the drinking vessels of King Solomon's were of gold. And all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold, none were of silver. It was not anything accounted of in the days of Solomon. So everything was gold. It was just, um, it was just uh, uh, so much uh, blessing. I mean, uh, Solomon was was blessed uh, beyond anything he could ever imagine and we remember he his how he started he loved the lord and and the lord appeared to him and asked him and uh, what what can i do what what do you want me to do for you um uh solomon and solomon asked god for wisdom god gave him a uh, wisdom god was pleased that he asked for wisdom and on top of the wisdom that he gave him he uh gave him wealth riches honor and his name was was known all over the world everybody came um to hear the wisdom of uh, solomon in those days so and and also and we see in the uh, after he um he built a beautiful temple for magnificent uh temple for the lord and the lord um said yes i i i I, I will dwell in this house and he was uh, basically telling him that if you call upon me I will answer and I will forgive your sins I will heal your land well there was a warning given to um, uh, Solomon and the Lord told him to to always um, uh, we'll see the When we look at when we look at uh, twenty two, um, that is in um, when we uh, look at First uh, Kings six twenty two six twenty two, and it shall be answered, and uh, no twenty one, and this house which is high shall be an astonishment astonishment to everyone that passes by it. So they shall say, Why had the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of fault of the land of Egypt. So he was, um, God gave him a warning not to turn to the other God, not to to stop seeking him and we know that without god we can do nothing without him we can do nothing and um he said the scriptures tell us if we see god we'll find him and we'll search for him with all our hearts yeah so we always remember no matter how 
how rich we are, how wealthy we are, to always know uh, that our source is in God. is 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 all about God. It's all about God. And I'm always I um I always mention that I am so glad for the uh, covenant we have that in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever we ask in His name, that He does it for us, and um, that if we sin, when we any time we fall away, we we'll say we'll, we ask for forgiveness. He's faithful and just. He's faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all our righteousness. So the blood of Jesus Christ is um, is able to take care of any kind of uh, any kind of sin, as long as we any time we see ourselves that we're falling away of with sin, we should repent quickly and ask God to forgive us in the name of Jesus Christ with the the sacrifice and the and of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. We our sins are forgiven. Himself took our sicknesses, he took our diseases, our sins is nailed on the cross and we are healed by his stripes and we are forgiven because of his sacrifice. So um, let's continue with the story of um, Solomon. So in in First King eleven from one, and we see that um, uh, God had warned him about forsaking him, uh, about seeking other gods. You know. Um, the first commandment it says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And also in the Ten Commandments it says, Thou shalt serve no other God before me. So that's what basically the um the warning that was that God gave to uh, Solomon. You know, like we talked about in the beginning, Solomon started so good. He loved the Lord and the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him exceedingly abundantly above all he could ever ask or think. So in verse 11, in First King 11 from 1, and King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians and Hittites, from the nations of whom, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, "You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your heart after their God." Solomon clung to these in love, and he had seven hundred wives, princes, and three hundred concubines. And his wife, his wives turned away his heart. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God as was the heart of his father David. Wow. So a, um, Solomon, uh, he he married so many wives and and God already gave him the one and said, don't do this. It's, they're going to turn you away from me. And, and that is what eventually happened when he disobeyed God, when he didn't uh, listen to what God told him to do. He went ahead and got all these wives and they they turned him away from, from God. And his heart was no longer loyal unto his God. So we, when we go down to, we are still on Second Kings 11, when we go down to 9, so the Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and he had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he did not keep, but he did not keep what the Lord had commanded. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, "Because you have done this, I have not kept my covenant and my status which I have commanded you. I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do this in your days for the sake of your father David. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe." To your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem which I have chosen. So we see that um, the Lord even appeared to him and said um, 
what you did was foolish and um, you disobeyed me, you turned away from me, you were turning on to other gods and your heart has been turned towards other gods and and God um, uh, warned him about um, the was gonna consequences of his uh, decisions and um, so uh, this is a lesson for us that that um, you know God lays before us life and death blessing and cursing cursing and he and he and he um, encourages us to choose life choose life and. Uh, at all times and i mentioned it before i'm so happy i'm so glad for the confidence that we have right now that if we sin if we have any sin in our life we can and ask god we can ask we can confess our sins forsake it and he is faithful he's just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so after a uh, solomon turned away from the law there was nothing else um significant we hear about him um in first king eleven forty two, we see that solomon slept with his father as fathers and he was buried in the city of david his father and Robohim, his son, ran in his stead. So after Solomon did what was evil in the eyes of God, that was basically the end of the story for him. But uh, we didn't really hear anything else uh, significant about him anymore. So that's why I keep saying we thank God for the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we sin, we can ask for forgiveness. And the Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So one significant lesson that we learn from Solomon is, is that he asked God for wisdom. We see how his life was transformed because of the wisdom that 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 God uh, gave him, and we we know that in this uh, day and age, with everything going on, we we need wisdom to be able to navigate our day to day life. So I'm so glad that the the Bible says that we can ask God. We see in the life of Solomon that he asked God for wisdom, and God gave him wisdom, and even other things that he did not ask for. So in um, a, the Bible says that if any of us lacks wisdom, that's in James 1, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let us ask God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given unto him. The New Living Translation says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and I will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. So today we're going to ask God for wisdom. We need wisdom. We need wisdom with everything going on. We need wisdom in our relationships. We need wisdom um, in our jobs. We need wisdom basically for everything we're doing these days. Uh, in these end times, we need wisdom. So before we uh, pray, I would like to ask anybody, if you haven't... Um, receive jesus christ as your lord and savior that is where everything starts the the bible says that the the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom so wisdom starts with jesus christ is all everything starts with jesus everything starts with jesus yeah that is the beginning of everything so if you have not received uh, jesus christ as your lord and savior i will encourage you to pray with me um pray with me uh today and to be born again you can word the prayer any any way you um you want to what it is just um the, the bible says um jesus christ he stands at the door and he knocks he said if you open the door i will i will come in yeah so let us pray so um if you if you want to be born again today please pray with me say father lord i thank you for the sacrifice of jesus at the cross of calvary i believe that jesus died for my sins and after three days he resurrected i confess my sins and i forsake them i ask jesus come into my heart and leave i make you my lord and savior 
in jesus name amen so if you pray that prayer you are born again welcome to the family and i'm so glad that you made that decision today and look for a bible believing church around you and and start attending and um and listen to the word pray and um and grow and we i i want to pray for you uh holy spirit uh take control take control father we commit um uh, the new believers into your hands we ask you to to help them to lead them to the right church to go to open their eyes to see what you're saying to open their hearts to hear your word Holy Spirit, take control in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're going to ask God for wisdom based on uh, James 1.22. We say, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. That gives to all men liberty and our bread not, and it shall be given unto him. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your word. We thank you. Um, that you said if we ask it shall be given unto us you said we should seek and we shall find you said we should knock and the door will be opened unto us today we ask you for wisdom in every aspect of our life oh lord for like your word said in james 1 5 if we lack wisdom we should ask you father we pray for wisdom we pray for wisdom in every aspect of our lives father lord open up our eyes to see what your you're showing us our ears to hear what you're telling us thank you lord for answering our prayers in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for listening to today and um hope to see you soon god bless thank you